Hello and welcome to Console Cowboys. Today we're going to take a look at R2 debugging usage. We'll cover debugging flow, how to view data during the execution of the program, including variable data, register data, stack memory. We'll also look at how to modify memory at runtime and patch binaries. This is the basic usage that sets the foundation for starting to use R2 for dynamic analysis. So let's get right into it by loading up our previous application. As you remember, it was in a.out, which is the default from GCC. And if you remember, you just type in a password and we get an access denied. So we can load this up into R2 with debugging enabled by doing the minus D command. Um, but we're not going to do that here. We'll actually show how to do it by enabling it while we're in the program as well. And just one other tip. If you remember, we were using a triple A to analyze the application. We can actually do this when we open it with a capital A, capital A, and then we'll do our A dot out. And this analyzes the binary as we open it. Now that we're at our R2 terminal, having already ran the analysis, we can view our functions with AFL. And then as you remember, you can seek to the function with the S command. So we'll seek to the main function and then we'll run PDF to view the disassembly. Now let's also change the colors because I don't really like the color scheme here. It's kind of like neon. So we'll go ECO and that'll list out all the different color schemes. We're gonna do Gen 2. And then if we run a PDF, you'll see that it's a little bit nicer. You can kind of play with those on your own and see what you like. Now let's hop into the visual mode by putting a capital V and we'll hit P then we'll hit P again. This particular view looks much like what you'd have when you're debugging because we have our registers up here. We have some of the stack dump memory up here and then we have the disassembly for the main function. Now if we hit the colon we get a command prompt down here and we can do various things. Now the debugging commands are with a D so if we type D question mark will get the various commands that we can use. For example, db. We could say db main. And now we're going to break at the main function because that set a breakpoint. Um, but we actually need to run an OOD because that reopens the file in a read-write mode that we can debug in. And now we got the breakpoint was already set at this address because we already did it but usually it'll just say breakpoint set if it wasn't set. And you can also continue to that breakpoint with DC. And then we just hit the breakpoint. So if we just hit enter here, we'll see that we have a highlighted thing right here. And it also says B right there for breakpoint. Now, if we scroll to that location, like scroll to a various location, we can actually hit F2 here and that'll add a breakpoint or hit F2 again and that will take the breakpoint off and we can go back to where our current uh, instruction pointer is, which is the beginning of main by just hitting the period and now we're right back up at the top of main. So there's a lot of different uh, hotkeys you can use and the main thing that you wanna know is that this uses the same hotkeys as like OLLI debug or X64 in that you can hit F9 to run the program, F7 to step into a function, F8 to step over a function, or F2 to set a breakpoint like we just did. As long as we're on that line, it'll set a breakpoint there. Now we already reviewed this code before and we know what it does, so let's see how to analyze it dynamically. You can hit the F8 command to step till we get to the first function call by pressing F8. And as we do this, you'll notice that the stack up here is changing and you'll also notice that registers are changing as we move various things, subtract from the stack and we move down. And for example, we're here on XOR EAX EAX, which would be the RAX register. So now if we hit F8 again, you're gonna see the zero out up here because we XORed it with itself. And as we said, when you XOR something with itself, it becomes zero. Next, we have this LEA RDI string login, which is going to take the address of STR login and put it into RDI because that's what load effective address does. We'll say F8. 
And now we're at a call. Now if we pressed F7, we would hop into this call, but since this is a puts and it's a basically a standard function, we don't wanna reverse that, so we'd hit F8 to go over it. But first, let's check out the values that we already saw change. So if we hit the colon again, if we do DR and we type in EAX, we should get zero, zero, because that's the value that's in EAX right now. And we do, right? And then if we type in dr and we do a rdi right here this should hold the address of string login so we go rdi and that's the address of string login now if we take this address and we do a pf at and we actually need a z there and we paste in that address, we will get the value that's inside that address, right? So this address equals this login value, which is just a string. We also could have done pfz at rdi, and that should give us the same value. Let's hit the enter key to get back into debugging, and then let's hit the F8 key all the way down to the F gets. Notice that F gets is taking in a stream, which is stdin there. It's taking in a size, which is seven, and it's taking in a string pointer, which is our value that we're typing in. We'll hit the F8 key again to hop over the F gets because we don't plan on actually reversing that. And we're gonna have to type in the password down here. So we'll type in test. And then if we hit the F8 key again, We'll see that we move our argument into the RDI, and then we wanna call the sim.check password. Now check password is user-defined code, it's not a standard library. So let's check what's actually there, which we did in the last video, but I'll show you another way to do it. We don't actually have to seek there to print out the disassembly. We hit the colon here, we could type PDF, and then we do the at sign, followed by a space, and then we'll type in sim check password. Now we can see the disassembly of sim check password without actually having to seek to there and change where we are in the code. So now if we hit enter again, we'll see the actual disassembly of the function that we're currently in, followed by F7 this time to actually jump into the function instead of going over it. In this code, we see our stack being set up with the push RBP, RSP to RBP, and we see variables and arguments being set up on the stack. So we're gonna F8 all the way down into the call for string compare. And then we're gonna take a look at the values in the code. So we just set up a bunch of variables on the stack. We can hit colon and type in AFVD and we're gonna get a list of all the variables. So here we see our S1 variable, which is Joshua. We see S2, which is actually some hex values. Now we can take a look directly at a specific variable by typing a dot before AFVD. So dot AFVD, and we type in S1, and that'll just show us the single value there. Additionally, we can check the uh, variables here we see the string compare and right before string compare we see it setting up the values that we need for string compare which is the RDX to RSI, RAX to RDI and those are coming from these values up here which is the Joshua and also our argument that we passed in right so then we can do a PFZ at RDI, and that gives us our Joshua value, which is the password that is programmed into the actual function. And then we can get our argument that we put in by going PFZ, and then that would be the RSI, and that would be our test. And at the end of test, we actually see the new line as well that was put there by default. So this is the basic procedure for running dynamic analysis and being able to check the values and see how everything's going. Now, additionally, if maybe we're doing some exploitation 
and you wanted to check the stack memory in a specific position, you can run commands kind of like GDB with like a X slash. So X slash 128 would give 128 bytes X. And we say maybe near RSP, right? The stack pointer. And that would print out some memory on the stack. And we actually see Joshua there. And we see our test value there. And if maybe we were doing exploitation, we might see all our A's there, right? Um, another interesting thing is maybe we're trying to see what the zero flag is after some kind of compare. We can do that with a DR1. And that prints out all of our flags right here. So we see that a zero flag is set. We see that no carry flag is set, etc. So that's actually pretty cool too. Now another thing that we can do is you'll notice that after this string compare, if I scroll down here a little bit, we're going to see a jump if not equals after we do our string compare. We compare that to zero and then we do a jump if not equals. So if those two values don't equal, we're going to jump to this 321C. If we look at 321C, it's down here. That is our access denied. Now we don't want our access denied. We actually want to hop down into the other function that says access granted. So we don't wanna go here. So how do we actually fix that? We can do this dynamically during runtime by actually patching out that jump if not equals to a jump if equals and reverse the logic. Now, how would we do that? So in order to do that, we hop in with a colon down here and we want to seek to that address. We do seek, and we want to go to this jump if not equals. So I'm going to copy that. And now we're at that address. So if we print the disassembly there, and we just go PD1 to print one line of disassembly, we'll see that we're at that jump if not equals. And we'll see that the opcode is this 75 here, and the 75 is that JNE. So what we need to do is change that to a JE. So how do we do that? We need to know the opcode. So we can look that up online, right? So if I open up my Firefox here and I type in jump opcodes, we should be able to find a reference online. And I click this first one. It gives a uh, x86 jump reference. Now we see this uh, jump not equals here. And we actually see... That means that the zero flag is set to zero, and we have 75 is the opcode. Now, if we want a jump equals, that would mean that the zero flag is set at that point, and we want 74, right? So let's write 74 to it. We can do that with a WX, and since we open this with debugging, also has write enabled with that OOD and we say 74. And then if we print out the disassembly again, and we do one there, we'll actually see that we just changed to jump if equals. And we'll see that our opcode is now 74. So if we now do this string compare by hitting F8, I have to hit enter first to get back in here. And so I'm gonna hit F8 and I'm gonna jump over that hit that again, I'm gonna go down here. And now if we do our flags again, we do dr1, our flag here is set to zero. And what we're going to do is hit enter and we're gonna hit F8 again. And what you're gonna see is we are not going to take this jump because we're checking uh, jump equals instead of jump not equals and we reverse the logic, so we're no longer gonna go into access denied. And then we're gonna call sim result. And in sim result, if you remember, is actually going to uh, print out the result that we want. So we can say PDF at sim dot results without actually having to browse to it. We can just print out the disassembly there. And within there, we see the access granted. So this is where we wanna go. Right, so now that changed the values, but the only problem we have here is this is during runtime. So if we actually get out of here and we hit escape, 
I'll hit enter. I'll hit escape a few times. I'll hit quit. And I'll say, yes, I want to quit. And if I run this dot a dot out and I say test, we still get access denied because incorrect password. So let's open this up with write permissions and then we'll change the value when we're not debugging. So we actually change it in the binary. We don't change it during runtime. And then we can save that patch. So we'll say R2 minus W this time. And we'll say minus AA and we'll go a dot out. We will do a AFL and we'll do a PDF at sim dot check password. And we're going to see this value here. So we have our JNE is going to be right after the string compare. We have this JNE. So what we're going to do is seek to that. So that value is going to be this one. You'll notice it's a little different this time. Seek. And we're going to go PD1. That's going to print out our disassembly. We see the JNE. We're going to say WX74 to replace that value. PD1 again to check that it was actually changed. And we're going to see that it is now a jump equals. So now if we quit out of here, we can run the binary, a dot out, put in test. And we actually patched it now, and now it automatically switched the logic. And when we type in a incorrect password, we get access granted. Now you might ask yourself, where would that be useful in real life? Let's say you have a binary that has a time limit or a number of days you can play a video game. You could patch out that value to a more desired value or change the logic so that it always lets you play the video game. And that would be a good way to go about using patching. Now I know that was a ton of information. So what I would suggest is go grab some simple reversing challenge binaries or code up something on your own, run through it, monitor the memory, the variables, just get used to using all of the commands in R2. Also remember you can always hit the question mark to get more information about the command. I hope you learned something. Remember to leave a comment and hit the like button. It really does help get the videos out there. And thanks for watching.